right, we're going to pick up right where we left off with solving trig equations. Tonight we're going to solve more difficult trig equations. Please don't think about them as necessarily being more challenging. It's just that they have a little bit more algebra to get to where we need to get to. So, strategy, set the equation equal to zero. Factor if possible, that's where that algebra is going to come in. Convert to all one trig function. And then this part in blue about going around the circle that many times, we're going to do that. I'm going to explain why, and then I'm going to summarize that again for you at the end. But it is typed up in your packet if you need to look back at your strategy for these types of problems. All right, so to start, we're going to review a little bit of factoring. I need things that multiply to 1 and add to 3, but we need a leading coefficient of a 2x. So I know I'm going to start like this. Things that multiply to positive 1 are just going to be positive 1 and positive 1. If you quick check with FOIL, your middle terms will add to 3x. So two things multiplied together to be 0. Our 0 product property would say that 2x plus 1 has to equal 0, or x plus 1 has to equal 0, meaning that x is equal to negative 1 half, or x is equal to negative 1. Those are our two answers. So, just like we've been doing, solve between 0 and 2 pi, making that connection from algebra to trigonometry. I'm going to look at sine here as being similar to my x that I had here. So instead of factoring into 2x plus 1, I'm going to factor into 2 sine of x plus 1 times sine of x plus 1 is all equal to 0. Two things multiplied together. Either the first one's going to be 0, or the second one's going to be equal to 0, which means that sine of x is going to be equal to negative 1 half, or sine of x is going to be equal to negative 1. So on the algebra, we could just stop. But here, I need to find some angle on my unit circle that has a sine value of negative one half. So sine's negative in quadrants three and four, and our y values are going to be negative a half at seven pi over six and eleven pi over six. Where is sine equal to negative one? Well, that only happens once at exactly three pi over two. So there's your answers. Again, not too much different from what we've done, it's just that it's a little bit more challenging because you got to factor. All right, this one is where we're going to use that strategy of trying to get things into one function. So we've got a cosine, a sine, and a tangent, all being equal to 2. I'm going to say we've done this before as an identity, and I'm going to use similar logic to help us get everything in terms of one function. So I changed tangent into sine over cosine. This might look familiar to you from a previous example. So to combine these two things, I'm going to need to get a common denominator by multiplying by cosine over cosine, and this technically gets multiplied by 1 over 1. Now that they have common denominators, I can add across the top. Still thinking about identities, cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. 1 over cosine is the same thing as secant. So secant of x is equal to 2. Well, that means that cosine of x would have been equal to that reciprocal, 1 half. So where on your unit circle is cosine equal to a half? That's going to happen at pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3, quadrants 1 and 4. Okay, so a little bit of identity work to get us to the point where we can actually solve the equation for something on our unit circle. 
these are the ones that I think get a little bit more challenging and where you're going to use that last step in your strategy of how many times to go around the circle. So we're going to start the same way that we always do in trying to isolate our trig function. So I'm going to say that 2, I'm just going to write this over here so I have a little more room, 2 cosine of 3x is equal to negative root 3, which means cosine of 3x is equal to negative root 3 over 2. So let's pretend for a second that this just said cosine of theta was equal to negative root 3 over 2. We'll be looking for somewhere in our unit circle where cosine is negative, so quadrants 2 and 3, and negative root 3 over 2. So that would mean that our theta, or in this case our 3x, would be equal to 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. So solving for x, x would be equal to 5 pi over 18 and 7 pi over 18 because I divide all of these by 3. Okay, hopefully you're thinking a little bit about the fact that this 3x means that I'm going to rotate around my unit circle and I'm going to squish in that period to be 2 pi over 3. So I'm going once around my whole circle in just 2 pi over 3, which leaves me a lot of room for getting to 2 pi. So I'm going to have you look at this graph real quick. This is the graph of our function that we're talking about. And right now I've found this angle and this angle. It's where my graph is equal to 0. But this is 0. This is 2 pi. I'm missing this angle, this angle, this angle, and this angle. I should have six times where my graph is going to cross over the x-axis. So there's got to be a better way for figuring this out. Instead of dealing with all these pi over 18s and all these small fractions, I'm going to suggest that we consider going around our circle three times before we do the dividing out of 3. So I'm still going to get to this point, cosine of 3x equals negative root 3 over 2. But this time I'm going to say that means that 3x has to be equal to 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6. We got those. But if I'm going around my circle, Here's 5 pi over 6, here's 7 pi over 6. I also need to figure out that was once, twice is going to get me here and here again. Three times is going to get me here and here yet again. So if you remember back from unit 3, we're going to need to find some coterminals with 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. How do you find coterminals? Coterminals, you're going to take your original angle, so for us, 5 pi over 6, and you're going to add 2 pi. Well, adding 2 pi in this case would be the same thing as adding 12 pi over 6. So this is going to be 17 pi over 6. I'm going to need to do the same thing with 7 pi over 6, so that's going to be 19 pi over 6. I need to go yet again, so adding 17 pi over 6 plus 2 pi, I'm going to get 29 pi over 6. And adding 12 pi over 6 to 19 pi over 6, I'm going to end up with 31 pi over 6. Now, when I go through and divide by 3, I'm going to get x equals 5 pi over 18, 7 pi over 18, 17 pi over 18, 19 pi over 18, 29 pi over 18, and 31 pi over 18. All of these angles fall between 0 and 2 pi. Because if we're thinking about 18 being in our denominator, this would be like saying find everything between 0 and 36 pi over 18. All of these angles are smaller than our 2 pi limit. It's just how we get there. So again, this would have been 
one rotation and I get two angles from it. But I need to go not once, not twice, three times that I'm going to get around in that two pi. And then to help me get these exact locations, that's why I divide out by that 3x at the end, just like you would solving algebraically. So let's do another one to practice. I'm more concerned that you understand the how. If you get the why, that's awesome, okay? But really, let's work on practicing this thing. So, 2 cosine of x times cosine of 2x equals negative cosine of 2x. I'm going to do some algebra. Factor out a cosine of 2x. These two things multiplied together. That means either this first one has to be equal to 0, or the second one has to be equal to 0. This will me know how to solve. Cosine of x is equal to negative a half. Where does that happen? That's going to happen at 2 pi over 3 and at 4 pi over 3. This is the one that requires a little bit more work. So we're going to say that 2x is equal to, thinking of all the places where cosine is 0. So that's going to happen at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. But that's once around the circle. This is telling me I need to go twice around the circle. So coterminals is going to be 5 pi over 2 and 7 pi over 2. My last step then is to divide everything by 2. So x is going to equal pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. Now you'll notice that all of these angles, the green ones and the red ones, fit the criteria of 0 to 2 pi. Alright, let's practice it again. Tangent of 2x is equal to 2 tangent of 2x is equal to 2. So to start, I'm going to say tangent of 2x is equal to 1, because I divided everything through by 2. So that means that 2x is going to be equal to all the places where tangent is 1. Well, tangent is equal to 1 at pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. But I need to spin around twice. So that's going to be at 9 pi over 4 and at 13 pi over 4. What I'm doing there is I'm adding 2 pi to this one and adding 2 pi to this one. 2 pi would be the same thing as 8 pi over 4. So 1 plus 8 gave me the 9. 5 plus 8 gave me the 13. So it's that coterminal concept. And I'm going to divide everything through by 2. So x is equal to pi over 8. 5 pi over 8. 9 pi over 8. And 13 pi over 8. Okay, it's telling me take two trips around the circle. Alright. This last one I'm going to get started for you, and then I'm going to have you try to do the looping around the circle on your own. So I'm going to suggest that you factor out two things multiplied together. Go ahead and pause the video, try to solve that, and then come back when you're done. Alright, from my first trip around the circle, where cosine was 0, that got me these purple angles. Where cosine was 1, purple. Cosine was negative 1, purple. But then I had to take a second trip around the circle because of this leading 2 on all of these. So on the second trip, I got 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, 2 pi, and 3 pi. So then to solve for x itself, divide everything through by 2, and these are your 8 final answers. Okay, again, I know that part gets tricky, but if you read, read what's in your strategies, you will get the hang of it, you will understand it, and it all has to do with figuring out how many times your equation is actually being graphed and finding true solutions.